Hi, this is National Master Dan Heisman, and we're here on YouTube to help you have another video to improve your chess game. Um, this is kind of a follow-up to an earlier video I did on using an engine to help analyze your games. And I see a lot of people do the same thing, which is they play a game online on chess.com or Lee Chess, and chess.com and Lee Chess automatically has an engine analyze their game. And then they review the game with the engine analysis where the engine says, oh, this move is a question mark, you should have done this, or, and you know, that's very helpful, but it's not one tenth as helpful as going through a game with an engine yourself and playing the what if game. And I talked about that a little bit in the previous video, but I thought I'd concentrate on the what if here. You don't need a grandmaster to sit next to you to ask people, well, what if I had done this? Or what if he had done this? Or, or maybe I should have tried this. And you can look and see what it is and, and get that pattern recognition into your brain as to what p possibilities would happen in games. Of course, your opponent's the only one who knows why he did things. So that's why it's so important to go over the game with your opponent first. But when you're going over the game with the engine, rather than just seeing the summary that's given to you, and I have a summary up here right now. If we look on the upper right here for this amateur game that was played, this is the kind of summary that the engine gives you where he says things like, uh, Bishop G5, nine Bishop G5 question mark, mistake, Bishop A3 was best. That's all well and good, but what I wanna do is show the top three moves and play some what if games. So let's do that with this game. Let's turn, make sure it's showing the top three. It's showing the top two. Click to show the top three. All right, and now the engine's on, shows the top three moves. All right, so let's start going through the game and doing some what if. So white played e4. We're looking at it from black's point of view because my student was black. Black played Sicilian. White played knight f3. Black plays e6, heading for a Taimana variation. White plays d4. Now let's say you're worried if you're an e6 player that white might play the c3 variation. So you can say, well, I've always had trouble when people play c3. What should I do? And now we can see the top three moves. And why am I looking at the top three? Because if they're all close, then they're probably all reasonable. And if there's a giant gap between, let's say, number one and number two, then you pretty much have to learn number one. Right here, we're seeing that it's 0.1, 0.2, 0.2. Also notice that somebody has done this before and let it run overnight because the depth that the engine is, is a depth that I could never achieve in this video. It says depth 44 from the cloud. So what happens is when people use the engine and they let it think like overnight and save it to the cloud, then when you get to that same position in the opening, which other people have gotten to many times, you don't have to try to let it think and think and think and think. It's already thought overnight for somebody else and they saved it to the cloud. So it's kind of neat. So here we can see the number one move if someone plays c3 is d5. It says you could also play knight c6, you can play knight e7, but d5 hitting the center would be number one. All right, so that's a what if game. But white played the main line, which is the open Sicilian. d4, black tick with the side pawn, c takes d4. White plays knight takes d4, and black plays knight c6, all main line in Taimana variation, and the engine picks that up and says this is line b44 in the ECO code. And now the main move for white is going to be something like to play knight c3. The engine actually likes bishop to f4, but you can see here, again, it's depth 44. Bishop f4, knight c3, knight b5. Knight c3 and knight b5 are more common. You don't see knight b5 among amateurs very much, but it is a grandmaster move. Knight c3 is common among all levels. Bishop f4, the engine says, is just as good. White plays c4, and they say inaccuracy. Playing c4 against the Sicilian like this, the open, the open Sicilian, a lot of times this pawn structure is called the Meroxy bind, but the Meroxy bind is normally played against black fianchetto variations. And here, black's not playing a fianchetto. So c4, and I think inaccuracy is a little unfair because if we look at the evaluation again, the, it dropped from, he had said bishop f4 was the right move. And if we go back a move, bishop f4 is plus 0.3. And after c4, at 40 ply, it's plus 0.2. Well, he only lost a tenth of a pawn. I wouldn't call that inaccurate. I would think he'd have to lose three or four tenths of a pawn to be inaccurate. So... I don't really like the computers. 
um, note here of, of telling someone that it's inaccurate to play c4 because losing a tenth of a pawn by playing one line against another line is rarely going to be something that's considered uh, inaccurate or something you should really improve on. All right, anyway, back to the game. So white plays knight f6 and hits the pawn. e5 is not possible here because the knight takes e5. White guards with knight c3. And in these kind of positions, black's trying to figure out if he can get his pawn up to d5 and like blast open the center. And what he does to help that is he pins the knight with bishop to b4. And that now threatens knight takes e4 since the knight is pinned. So white has to get out of it. And let's ask white what, what's all the ways to get out of it. If we look up here, the number one way is to trade. Knight takes c6, d takes c6, and then queen d8. After king d8, then play bishop d2. Let's show what that looks like. Knight takes, they suggest, I think taking, well, he did suggest taking with the d pawn. Now he's suggesting maybe taking with the b pawn. And now it says bishop d3 to guard the e pawn. And it's suggesting black should play e5, where white has maybe a normal opening advantage. Okay, so again, we're doing this what if game. What if white had done something else? White plays f3, and now the normal idea here is to play d5. Now, you might look at it and say, but he's got all these pawns on that square. Yes, he does, but you have a knight and a queen on that square, and his knight is not guarding the pawn. So the normal idea here would be to play d5, and d5 is the number one move. And this is where there's a lot of good what-ifs in this position, because black's played bishop takes c3 check, doubling and isolating the white c pawns on the semi-open c file and isolating the white a pawn and you might think well why not mess up his pawns completely here like this and i have a little principle that i try to teach people which is if you're weak on a certain color of squares like here black's weak on the dark squares and your opponent has that color bishop and you don't and the queens are still on the board Give your opponent about a one pawn bonus for having that situation. Well, here, white has that situation. And look at the evaluation of the position. My student, when I went over this game with him, said he learned a lot from doing this. And that is, if he had played the more right move d5 instead, <clears throat> the engine has him ahead here by about three tenths of a pawn. For instance, e takes d5, e takes d5, Queen e2 check only move. And now it's giving a move like knight to e7. And he's looking at maybe bishop g5, threatening to mess up the pawns. White says, go ahead and mess up my pawns. I'll just castle. A lot of people are afraid to do this. They're afraid after bishop takes, pawn takes, they're going to get checkmated. And it's true. If you don't play it right here and then bad things can happen. Right now, white's king is in the center. Black has the bishop pair. Black has a lot of ways of blasting open the center. White has to play something like castle queen side. And now you can take the knight and open up his king. Both kings are open up, and the engine says that black's better. So again, we have this what if line. What if black played the main line and not if he took the knight? Now, you might say, but what if, if I go here, what if I just start attacking those pawns? Isn't black better? Well, in the game, black played castle, which the engine didn't like. Let's take all these lines off the board. And again, we could play what if games. Let's say white, black does play queen a5 and go, starts going after those pawns. Engine says, I'll guard the pawn with my knight. And it says, now black has to castle. And you say, wait, I can remove the guard with a6. A6, knight checks. You go, all right, let me attack the knight with the king. And now the engine says, just queen to d2, guarding the pawn. And the king can't castle. And now this bishop on c1 is going to become really, really strong. Again, what if games? Knight to e8, trying to get rid of this knight. A4, why a4? Can he just take the knight and win the pawn? What if? Well, what if he takes it? Then bishop a3 hits the knight. Now we got to guard the knight. Well, we could play queen to e5 or we could play queen to c7 just for the fun of it. We don't like queen c7 because, well, he can't play e5 right away because of knight takes. So let's play queen c7. What if we do that? The engine says play e5 anyway. And you go, but what if I just take that pawn? 
Engine says, queen checks, hits the knight and the king. If you play f6, queen checks again. Black's up a piece, but uh, white's getting in pretty strongly. Knight f7, only move to guard the rook. Rook d1, putting more pressure. And this what if is leading us to a position where black's still up a piece, but white has all the initiative, all the pressure, and actually with best play, white's up 5.1 here. So again, what if, what if, what if, what if. All right, so in the game, black castled. And the engine says, oh, if black, if white understands that the bishop on this on this weak square diagonal here is going to be a monster. Let's play a couple moves on that and show you. Let's say he plays there and hits the rook. You have a choice of either blocking it with the pawn or moving the rook. Let's say you move the rook. Now he could just sit his bishop right in here and like choke you to death where it's gonna to be tough to get your pieces out. Well, then let's do a what if again. But but what if we just push the pawn to d6 and guard it that way? Engine says, well, if you do that, first I'll trade the knights to get rid of a defender on the e5 square. And then I'll just take the pawn and that doesn't do any better. All right, well, that was an easy what if. So what if, what if, what if? Well, if white would understand that bishop to a3 is the move that takes advantage of this mistake, bishop takes c3, then white would get a big advantage here. Notice white would be up 2.1. Well, normally it only takes about 1.0 to win a game. So if white had found the right idea here, bishop a3, he's completely refuting black's idea, and black should never play this opening again, whether he won the game or whether he lost. All right, so... Let's go to the next move. White plays bishop g5. Well, now we can see why the engine gives that a question mark. It's the wrong diagonal for the bishop. In fact, black would be very, very happy if, if white took the bishop, even if black had to take back with the pawn. And again, people scream and yell, oh, my king's open, I'm gonna get mated. Well, no, actually, you're, you're getting more control over the dark squares. And, you know, let, let's show you that, for example. Right now, it says black's best move is d5, but let's do a little what if. Let's put the queen somewhere else. Let's put the queen on, let's say, I don't want to put it on a5 because it'll attack the c3 pawn. Let's put the queen on c7 or something, or b6. And now let's play bishop takes, pawn takes. And it says, yeah, white's doing okay here because you didn't like the queen b6 move. So we'll have to do a better what if. All right, let's try d6, bishop takes, pawn takes. Uh, Stockfish says white's a little better, but just now only just a normal white advantage of about 0.4. You know, obviously black should have taken with the queen, but I'm just trying to show you that this is not disastrous. Now it's all the way down to 0.3. So that bishop is so strong that you'd be glad he traded it for the knight, even if you have to take with the pawn, which of course you don't have to do. All right, so back to the game. So here, the engine says black should immediately break open the center. Why? Because white's king is stuck in the center, and if you could blast open the center, you can get some good stuff going. And again, you can play what-if games and say, well, what if he just starts taking me with pawns? He takes me with a pawn, I take back. What happens if he removes the guard now, and then I'm going to lose this pawn? The computer says, just take the bishop, and if he takes the pawn, opening up the king, yes, you lost the pawn, but... You could get it back right away if you want with queen e5 check, double attacking the pawn and the king. And if he tries to block it so he can trade, he can castle. After queen takes d5, if he does castle, black can play something like rook d8. And black has about a one pawn advantage in the evaluation here. So that would be what with best play. Again, let's get back to the game after bishop g5. Black said, oh, Dan taught me to put the question to the bishop. If bishop takes knight's not a threat, so he plays h6. I can't complain about that, even though d5 is the more accurate move. White brings the bishop back. The engine says he should have kept the pin on, at least that way taking the knight out of the equation when black breaks in the center. And now black realizes he should break in the center. For all you out there who think, Oh, d5 is a bad move. It lets white undouble his pawns. Well, that's true. It does. But right now, white can't even castle. He's got pieces in the way on both sides. 
And while his king is stuck in the center and this bishop is on an unguarded square on the e-file, you can blast open the center by, with a move like d5 and all of a sudden create a bunch of tactical threats. And again, if you don't believe that and you didn't play that in the game, you could ask the computer and play these what-if games. Mr. Computer, what if I had played d5? In this case, he did play it. We could ask what happens if he doesn't play it. We could say, let's say he just plays a6 with the idea of playing queen c7. Engine says, oh, knight takes c6, pawn takes, queen takes, even though it gives the rook the file. And now white can play something like bishop b6 and say, go away, Mr. Rook. The rook has trouble staying on the file now. The only safe move on, on the file is really d7. If he goes to c6, d6, he can hit it with a pawn, play e5 and fork the rook in the knight. But now, how do we get the bishop out? There's no way to get our bishop out in this position. So we'd be like playing down a bishop and a rook, because if we can't get the bishop out, then it's hard to get the rook out. So the what-if game would say, that wouldn't be so good. All right, so we're going to look at what happened in the game. Much better move by black. He played d5. White said, I may, I'm getting my center blasted open, but I may as well undouble my pawns while I'm at it. Black takes, and now it suggests that white should play knight takes c6, but it says black's much better here. White takes the pawn, and now black has a lot of good moves. He could play knight takes d5, he can play queen takes d5, he can even some lines play rook. He doesn't want to play rook e8 yet because of d takes c6. So he plays knight takes d5, hits the bishop, and hits the pawn on c3, and... Now white's getting into big trouble because his king's in the middle and the lines are opening up. And right now, white, white's only compensation for his bad pawn structure and his king stuck in the middle is the bishop pair, but his bishops aren't that good right here. And right now, this bishop is hanging, so white tries to hold everything and play bishop d2. The engine said he should have played knight c6. Knight c6 is still minus 2, still pretty much winning for black. But every move he's making here is making things worse. So bishop d2 gives that a double question mark. All right, now black has all kinds of neat moves. Do you see how he can win a pawn? If you can't, pause the video and see if you can find it. Okay, the answer is you can play knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, queen checks, double attacking the king and the pawn on d4. And when he gets out of check with like g3 or something, you can take the knight. So let's show that. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen checks, pawn here, queen takes pawn. And not only are you winning the pawn, but poor white, you're now blocking his castle kingside diagonal. And things are getting really bad here. So that's probably what black should play. Just win the pawn, important center pawn. He said, well, it can't hurt first to, to play the rook checks. Turns out rook checks is a little less accurate, but it, rook checks is good enough to win. So rook checks, and now you say, well, what if he play, moves the king? What if he puts the bishop in the way? What if he puts the knight in the way? Again, you can play these what-if games. You know, the normal move here for white is to play something like bishop e2 with the idea that, boy, if black's not paying attention, maybe I can castle on the next move. So that's the move that he's most likely to play, and that's the move he did play. And if you want to know what you should do, if he did something else, let's do that. Let's take all those lines off the board. Let's say he plays king f2. Mr. Engine, what do you want to do? Engine says, play the same thing. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen checks. And if he goes here, you take this pawn with check. And if he tucks his way in, oh, well, you've only won a pawn and the king is a little safer. But you're, you're completely dominating the center. All you have to do is get these last two pieces in the game. Play something like bishop f5, beautiful diagonal. Bring that rook over to c8 or d8. And you're up a pawn, and you have the better king, and you have the complete control of the middle of the board. This game should play itself. All right, again, what if, what if, what if. So bishop e2 was played in the game. And now black says, all right, I see I can win that pawn. Let's go do it. He, whoops. Didn't mean to click on that button, wrong button, but that's okay. We'll just click back on the position. Rook e8 check. Bishop e2. Now he plays knight takes d4. Pawn takes and queen checks. This will essentially end the game. And now white 
plays g3. Still hope, hoping against hope we'll be able to castle. Queen takes d4. And now white makes him, oh, this not very good. He takes his queen off of the bishop on e2. He plays queen c8. I guess he, maybe he's hoping to play bishop takes h6 and get a draw or something. That's not really much of a threat. So what should black do in a position like this? Well, you want to look at candidate moves like queen d3 and queen e5, which threaten mate on e2 to see what the defenses are. But if that doesn't work and all you're doing is forcing him to bring his queen back to d1, then maybe the right thing to do here is to develop the bishop and just get that other rook in the attack, and this game should be toast, because right now black's only playing with three of his five pieces on the board, and that's that's sort of like a basketball team playing with only three players instead of five. You're going to have a lot better team if you have five guys on the court. One move you could play here, what if he plays bishop here, threatening bishop g2, and now he's hitting the rook, and the rook can't go to f1, and if the rook goes to g1, the queen can take it. And the, so bishop to g2 is a big threat here. How does, and not only that, it stops the king from getting out of the pin with king f1. It looks to me like there's no defense, and in fact, the engine says after bishop h3, it's made in 22. Oh yes, I, I saw 22 instantly. No, I actually just saw that bishop h3 creates some unstoppable threats. And that's why I really like that move. If you don't see that move, can you only play bishop f5? And the engine says, oh, bishop f5. Well, so far you're only up 16 pawns. Maybe if I look deeper, I, oh, now he says it's mate in 11. Well, that's even faster than bishop h3. So it turns out bishop f5, again, and the idea is very simple. You're just threatening bishop to d3 here. And you're also getting your rook into the attack. This is exactly the kind of thing you want to do. In the game, black played a move that was weaker. He played the mate threat, queen e5, forcing the white queen to guard the bishop. But really, it, it's going to be so much more powerful in these kind of positions to just get all your pieces into the attack. You know, that's a good general rule in chess is play with all your pieces all the time. And if you're attacking, unless you have an immediate tactic that wins, just getting more and more pieces into the attack is probably more important than making threats, unless those threats are completely unstoppable. And here the threat is stoppable. All right, so white plays queen to d1. And again, black should play bishop h3, bishop f5. Bishop h3 right now is number one. Bishop f5 is not in the top three, but that's the kind of move you want to play. Bishop f5 threatening bishop d3, bishop h3 threatening bishop g2. Getting the other rook in the game, you could double your rooks on the e-file. You could also play rook a d8 and get your rook on the same line with his queen, getting ready to pin the bishop. Instead, black plays knight to c3. Well, all right, that forces the bishop to take, and then the king will move. And then, you know, white doesn't have the bishop here anymore, but that knight was actually better than that bishop. So this is really not the kind of thing you're trying to do. The good news is black's winning by so much here that every move wins. But this isn't really what you're trying to do. So white has to take that knight. Black takes back check. King has to go somewhere like f2. If he goes king to f1, if you say, but I thought maybe king to f1, I think we can see here the bishop h3 check is going to be a monster. Bishop h3 check. Stockfish says mate in 7. If you say, I don't understand. Why is it mate in 7? Just play the moves out. Queen check. King here. Rook here, trying to remove the guard on the bishop. Queen c2. Queen takes f3. Sneaky pin. Rook g1. Bishop g4, hitting the bishop again. And now Stockfish says he should throw away his queen so it's mate in three instead. All right, so that's a what if if he had uh, played king to f1. He played king to f2. Black says go back away anyway, queen checks. And now if the king goes to g2, then just queen takes e2 wins the bishop. But if he goes king to f1, then bishop h3 check comes back in with tempo. So white reluctantly went back where he came from with king to e1. And now finally, finally, black plays his best move, which is to get the bishop in the attack. Bishop h3. Now the engine's like, okay, you're back up to minus 20 again. Once you see minus 20, 
it's, it quickly usually goes to a mate because if you're up 20 pawns, that's the equivalent of two queens, and that's pretty much going to be a mate. White finally moved his queen, rook in the game, rook c1. Black did the same thing. He finally moved his rook in the game. Both sides on the 22nd move of the game, getting their last, or getting the rooks on the A file into the game. And here it's made an 11 if white plays the best move, rook c2. But no human's going to play rook c2 and just allow rook takes d1 check. They're going to save the queen and hope for the best and hope that black messes this up. So white plays queen c2. The computer gives that a question mark exclamation point. But actually, you know, it's about as good as he had. Now black plays the sneaky pin. Queen takes f3, hitting the rook. White saves the rook with rook to g1, and black attacks that bishop again. And there's no way to guard the bishop for the third time. The rook on g1 can go to g2, but then the queen just takes it. So black's threatening, rook takes e2 check, and there's no defense, and the engine says it's mate in three. All right, so the purpose of today's game was not only to just show an interesting amateur game where white could have had a giant advantage in the opening, if he had taken advantage of the weak dark squares, but he didn't. And then black turned the tables on him and black ended up with a winning attack. But mostly to show you how you can keep playing these what if games with the computer, you're gonna learn a lot more doing what we did here by showing the top three moves or the top two moves or the top five moves and keep saying, but what if this, what if that, what if he had gone there? And during the game, you're always playing these what if games with yourself anyway. You're saying, should I make this move? Should I make that move? And then after the game, you want to answer all those questions. You want to go back and say, oh, I was wondering if I should have played this instead. And then you go back uh, over the game with the engine and you turn on the engine and you say, oh, yes, 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 yes. If I had played that other move, it would have been much better. Or, oh, no, 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 no. I was right not to play that move. I can see now from the engine's analysis that, that it, it wouldn't have worked. I didn't quite see that good defense that he had. All right, thanks for tuning in on the video. Please tell your friends about my channel, Dan Heisman Chess. If you haven't subscribed, you can do it. If you haven't liked the, vi the uh, video, you can hit that like button. But spread the word, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.